Good luck. I feel like you're gonna need it. I feel anxious. I feel so sad. Everything is so strange. Cheer up. I think I got the best brush in the world. And I feel like I can't say that because it was just in my head. We're going to pick up my things. I was extremely distracted. Extremely distracted. All of a sudden, I, I was not capable. Again, one day, not so far into the future, right? Do you really think I would have done something like that to myself? I don't think so. To add a little bit more of context, I had struggled with anxiety, severe anxiety and dissociation. But by the time I got to high school, I got really great help from their child mental health services. So I would had one or two really good years in high school uh, and then things started to be shaking up at home. And just for some reason or another, I ended up getting a really bad relapse. And um, at this point, I really struggled with self-identity. I didn't know who I was, I didn't know who I perceived myself to be. I didn't have any idea of how anyone else perceived me. I just didn't have a sense of style, I didn't really know what I was interested in. I was 18 at this point and I was just trying to finish high school and I started really struggling with anxiety again. And I also mentioned it already back in spring of 2018. In Norway, we don't see the sun for like almost, yeah, I would say like six months of the year. We go to school, it's dark outside, we come home before the school day is like ended, it's already dark. On Monday I was not at school and I went to dance and I had a serious, severe, real, super crazy panic attack, which just moved into an anxiety attack and, you know, from there my anxiety just like questioned everyday things. I am angry I said I didn't want to be diagnosed with generalized anxiety disorder when my therapist said she wanted to do that. But it's just later and we hope that you get a good day later. Thank you! For some amazing reason and stamina I managed to finish high school. Tomorrow I'm graduating high school. officially out. School for me has been like, it has felt like summer school for three years actually, like more or less. So for it to end right now it's just like I don't have to go to school tomorrow. <laughs> but really I don't have to go back to that school ever again. I just got a taste of it, you know, this past days. I've not had school. I've been there for some hours, <laughs> for fun. This is a new beginning. Good luck. I feel like you're gonna need it, but I also feel like you're gonna do great. Fine. And I spent the whole summer just locked in my room with really high agoraphobia and just the generalized anxiety was just like eating me up alive and I was so dissociated. <laughs> Why am I so heartbroken? Why am I crying like that? Well, we have to rewind. So let's just go ahead and do that. At the beginning of August 2018, I packed to be ready for college. The college I was going to was a prestige drama school, I'd say. And I was really excited, but at the same time, my anxiety had tortured me for quite a while again. I did struggle a lot when I was 12 till I was 15, and then it started to come back. 
I'm already addressing this at the beginning of March in 2018. I feel anxious and I don't like it. It's just not been well recently. I feel so sad. start this new drama school I plan to go there for three years like the whole entire time I was going to high school I plan on going here afterwards I'm leaving you today and this is like the first time because already in the morning of the first day no car today <laughs> we couldn't find the car we had rented because it had been in a car crash and broken down and then the new car we we were meant to pick up we couldn't find whatsoever because it was not parked where they said it was parked so foreshadowing much car is so full okay after one hour we finally found the car we just want to get out from home and I thought that it would just like work out magically and it didn't. Hello school! meetings with the principal and my teachers cheer up Så jag bara att hon hade haft mycket om panikanfall ställ och sånt. Men jag tror att jag är helt fixen det att jag är bara generellt där och längslig. one point I just ran home and I refused to come back. I 
I was completely heartbroken because that that had been my plan since forever and that has also been my like I almost made it a part of my identity I think that that's like that was gonna be a part of my life story and the last thing I knew about myself was that I really enjoyed acting so when um, I wasn't able to go to acting school and enjoy any of the classes I lost that as well and by that point I didn't have any identity of self. I spent the rest of the fall basically just laying in bed I was extremely dissociated and that's why I'm touching the wall because I'm like am I really here is this really here what's real what's not I don't know because I was so derealized and just on a cloud just floating and also I was really 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 convinced that I was gonna die any moment like I don't know for what reason but I, something was gonna kill me any moment And just like that, it was decided that I would drop out and I was heartbroken because that was my dream since first grade of high school and all of a sudden I, I wasn't capable, you know, of doing that and so I had to go pick up my things but the school was never the problem. The problem was my mental health and my mental health did not magically fix itself just because I dropped out of college.
I didn't go out a lot on my own. I didn't really meet friends. I was the girl in the house where the storm could not really touch me. There would be rain and lightning and thunder, but I would be safe inside my home. But then I realized the roof could fly off and the wind could be strong and the rain could be heavy and cold and the thunder could be incredibly loud and the lightning turned frightening like it hadn't before. I realized I could be in the middle of the storm and no roof could shield me from what were to come. It frightens me to know I could be there again, that this time the storm would be on a greater scale. I lived under a blue cloudy sky and was unaware that life could be unfair. I was no longer living on a clear slate. I was no longer living the perfect unspotted fairy tale. Reason and rhyme, grand and glorious, living the dream, yours and mine. In October, I finally was given like the first session at the treatment centers so or the public mental health care system. I got a um, psychologist now <laughs> that's not gonna work. I feel like nobody really cares when you turn 19. No one wants to help you, can help you, wish to help you. I don't sleep. I'm awake until 5.30. 4.30. They didn't take my problem seriously at all. It would be so long between each session and it wouldn't, I wouldn't really get treatment. So throughout the fall I tried to just like keep myself together, stay active, pretend like I didn't think I was going mental because I absolutely thought I lost it. So in the videos I look really like, like I'm smiling and laughing but I was not having fun at all. I was terrified but I just kept my mask on so well. And then 2019, I just tried to function. I tried to go out and do stuff, but it was very anxiety provoking. My therapist don't have the capacity to see me. I turned 19 in November. There goes my teenage years. And then in January and February of 2019, I actually had more or less a good two weeks period where I did shoot for a TV series and then of the TV series. I was about to say good morning, but I realized it's evening. I've been to Prague. I just came home. So one I had a real role and the other one was as an extra. So that was two really good weeks. I I don't really remember much of March and April and all that. I think I tried to continue like just staying active. I went to the gym and I went to church because I was getting my confirmation because I, I wasn't able to take the confirmation when I was 14, 15 because I was too ill. As you may know, um, I'm working on my confirmation, my religious confirmation. So I'm going to church every Sunday. Uh, I've missed a few, but um, I try to go. And next Sunday I'm also going to be a volunteer, so I'm, I'm excited and nervous. You know, they have like a program actually, so if you've been there two weeks ago, you know what they're talking about this time. It's insane. I've learned so much. And I feel my faith has just grown stronger. I still don't believe there's a man up in the clouds going, be light, but I do agree there's uh, energy and, you know, we'll just name it God. And I'm also working on getting my driver license, so I have managed to get my theoretical test done. So that's New York's resolutions. But I have a lot of anxieties connected to my driving lessons, so I really need to, like, force myself to do it. I feel really down, I feel hopeless, but I'm just gonna, you know, keep the dice rolling. Um, I'm struggling a lot, I'm not getting the mental health help that I need. I am just like drowning in my own dread. I, <laughs> I sound uh, sarcastic, but I'm really not. My thoughts are frighteningly hopeless. I went to dance classes and to the gym and I tried.
things took everything I had like I couldn't do more than that and I also didn't fully enjoy them because I was so ruined by anxiety and depression my panic disorder got worse like I thought it was bad already and it just got progressively worse over the course of the year I tried so hard to fake it till I make it and pretend like I was having a good time and I did everything that was meant to be good for me and like I tried to meditate I tried to like paint and draw and I tried to read books and I tried to do all of that but my anxiety was so high that I didn't ever have the capacity to ever enjoy any of it and I just did it on pure fear um and it wasn't a good time I attended a few events with my beautiful, beautiful concert group called Rockslo. <laughs> One of the worst things was when people were asked what I was doing, and I was like, um, they were like, why are you not studying? And I was like, Oh, but I'm working, so I tried to take jobs here and there. I worked as a theatre instructor. And a teacher. <laughs> so I think I have a pretty good example of masking and how you shouldn't think you know how someone is doing just from how it looks because if you look at my spring it might look like i had a really good time i went to dance classes i redid my room i met friends <laughs> but remember that this is over the course of months and in reality this is what was happening but yeah because my anxiety feels like i'm not gonna be able to overcome it and i'm not getting the proper help or the validation that i actually have a struggle i'm always being told to just try harder and everything i do is to try harder and soon, like, in, I have two counselling lessons left and then they don't see me anymore. And the worst thing is I am... Um, I feel like my my problems are not valid enough or important enough because it's like, it's just like, <laughs> try harder, you know, just don't go home when you feel like you're gonna die. But really, it's not like that. It's, it wouldn't be a problem if it was that simple. Ever since I had to leave college to go back home, I felt an immense amount of guilt. My anxiety was very dismissed as something not serious when it really, really ruined every second of my day and I was in a constant state of fear and or dissociation. The second thing is that I felt an immense guilt of living on my parents' money when I was 19 at this point. And I also felt an immense guilt that like it was my fault that I was still struggling with anxiety and that I would, if I just like got my guts together when I was 12, I wouldn't still struggle. Like if I'd just gone to school and not made a big fuss about it. And I think that was very unfair um, to do <laughs> to my 12 or little self. But I didn't, I, I still didn't have like a self-identity. The only thing I felt was like anxiety and guilt. So guilty and ashamed. The shame was huge and I just felt like the most terrible person in the world. I felt like such a burden. It's insane that I sat alone with all that. I'm convinced that I'm just broken. I just, I really just need some help. <laughs> but I, I need to show up. Oh my God. When you've been in a depressed or anxious state for quite a while, you start forgetting how your reality actually may have been. In the way I'm speaking, I'm obviously convinced that nothing has ever been okay, that I've always felt this way, and that I am genuinely and fundamentally just broken. Yes, I have struggled 
for a long time at this point so I kind of dismissed my whole first year of high school experience for example which was a really good period in my life I dismissed it as something that had ever happened and I was convinced that everything had always been horrible that nothing had or it would ever be okay my therapists don't have the capacity to see me I feel disconnected from who I am rest of the spring I really try my best to stay sane so like staying sane I mean like to stay connected with the world and I like, try and have anything that would benefit me positively but my days were just a mess I didn't have a purpose anymore I didn't have a purpose and the treatment didn't seem to be working and I was always going there on this like we have to maybe discharge you very soon so I didn't really feel hopeful it was just kind of a survival trying to pretend and keep my mask up. I was just so stressed on the inside and I just looked so calm pretty much on the outside but I was exhausted like i would wake up just so nauseous and with like headaches and like body aches and it all escalated we had some family troubles things changed quickly people moved out and then it was just like me and my mom living in an apartment where i'd grew up so i continued to go to the gym and all that and try to like get my shit together because the treatment wasn't doing it at all we didn't have a treatment plan the sessions were too rare and i was constantly living under the fear of being discharged any moment because they would always tell me that I was starting to use up my sessions and I was starting to use up my time that we had to start thinking about this chart without them actually doing anything to help me. We would do trauma work on some trauma I was still living in at the time and so when my family split up in August I didn't think so but everyone else thought that everything would be so much better from now on and that things would just like work out from now on. But what happened was that I'd spent so much time masking to deal with my anxiety and the traumas that when we split up and it all of a sudden wasn't that situation anymore, everything collapsed. Me managing to be social wasn't a god given at all. Um, my friend Sarah, for example, she lived just across the road. We would start with me just like meeting her out of my house. And I'd be like walking across the road and then we would meet outside and then I would like talk with her through the window and then I would climb up and sit in the window and then I would maybe even come in. But we had to progressively do that and that just says something about how much anxiety I had at the beginning. I couldn't go and visit people's home. Like I couldn't go to people's places and visit them and be there with them. I couldn't go on sleepovers and I couldn't really... I had a lot of anxiety when it came to inviting people over especially if it was like if I invited one person over because then it was me and them and I had to entertain them and I was so scared that what if I get like a panic attack and I want them to leave so instead I had these friends nights where I would invite like all my good friends or like friends I want to catch up with again and then because we were a group the dynamic would be different so it would be easier for me to manage to do that kind of things because Every other time I made an appointment with someone like to go out and drink coffee with them or have them over. So I am going to go and check off one of the boxes on the March 2019 resolution. Good evening. <laughs> I would always want to counsel so badly that I would drive myself insane with my anxiety and that I would actually end up having to counsel because I was too sick. I struggled a lot with keeping in contact with people. I struggled with phone calls. So to call people, for example, I've been working on that because that's something I, I didn't manage before. So I tried like calling my friends and catch up with them or having like a video chat. I remember when I called my friend at that point when we have video conversations, I would almost like faint of anxiety and my breathing would be up here because I was just so terrified of the whole thing. 
Like I would have to like end the conversation because I was having a panic attack. That's something I really, really struggle with. So keeping in contact with people was really hard because I struggled with calling them. I struggled with video calling them. I struggled with meeting them. I struggled with them meeting me. I, like I, it wasn't a very normal thing of me to be like, oh, let's go to the movies together. Or like, oh, let's go to a coffee shop together. Or let's go on a walk together. That's not something that came easy at all. Like even if my friend came to my house and we walked together on a walk, I would almost faint because the walk was too much, seeing my friend was too much, having a prior engagement was too much. You can imagine my world just... So when you see these videos of me with my friends, that wasn't easy. That took so much energy. It probably took my sleep the night before. It probably took the, the days before I knew I had that, a prior engagement, before you made the engagement. And it probably took a lot during, and I probably had to use a lot of time to get well again and strong again afterwards. So it isn't as easy and as cheerful and, I know, God-given as it seems. I also went to some flying yoga classes and I went to the gym. To me now, it was like, wow, that I had like the capacity to do that back then is quite impressive. And I tried to go to meetings. This is from a meeting where we we went there and then I felt so nauseous and so ill that we just went back home. We left the meeting before it had even started. There are a couple of things that I managed in August that I'm still proud of. I worked for a casting company for some days but that was kind of giving in the experience i guess but it really left me quite exhausted i wasn't doing good especially with my generalized anxiety how much effect negatively your anxiety has on you how many physical symptoms there are how mentally exhausting it is my mom and I went out one day and we went to a restaurant. It was really pouring outside. I ordered a pizza, I sat and watched a bird, and then we went over to this ice cream shop at the other side of the road and we bought ice cream. And I treasured that for a very long time. I didn't feel amazing, but I just felt calmer than I had in a very long time. Hi guys, uh, I've been working on my costume because I'm gonna be this uh, character from a very famous Norwegian author. And uh, this is my costume. Uh, you have no idea how hard it was to find it. Good morning, question mark. I spent all of the evening last night and the night in the ER. I started having a panic attack as usual and it continued and continued and it was so bad that I had mom call the ambulance but she started the whole conversation with I was just having a panic attack, so they sent us over to the psychiatric emergency room. They talked with me and they just told me to breathe and that didn't help at all. And then they said to just calm down there if things kept getting worse. You wouldn't believe it because I've had it for 10 years. I had it for a decade, but yesterday I had my worst panic attack ever since I've had this for a decade. I thought it couldn't get any worse. It did. And then mom and I walk down there because I refuse to get in a cab or take like a bus or whatever. We get down there in the evening and then because my mom starts to convo with she's having a panic attack and they think it will pass so they put us on non-urgent. So we sit there for hours on hours and hours and hours and my panic attack keeps going and keeps going and I'm sitting there just like so dizzy and just like making sounds to hear that I'm alive because I was so dissociated and the feelings of despair didn't pass at all. It was just a horrible experience without going into too much detail because it's gonna trigger me. And then around midnight or one or something like that they let us see a psychiatric nurse and she asked me about the treatment I'm receiving and like what I'm doing and stuff like that and I tell her well I'm not really studying and I don't really work and this is the treatment I'm getting and she was like shook as to like what the heck was this 
why was I getting so poor treatment? Why was I getting treatment so rarely? Why hadn't they thought of like sending me elsewhere, like making me go inpatient or sending me to residential or anything like that? Why would they just like tell me I didn't respond to treatment and then drop me off? She didn't understand, so she was just as confused as my mom and I were. And she wrote a little note to my psychologist and told him what he could do, like where he could like send me. She told me about things nobody had ever told me about that I could go and do, like I could receive that kind of treatment or I could like ask for help with this or like she gave me that information that I've been lacking for a year. And I'd heard of this residential place. I had mentioned it for my psychologist, but he told me, you are not sick enough for that. And so I didn't ask for anything more. But then I just got so progressively worse that we sent a referral there. And I thought, oh my god, oh my god, <laughs> that's so great. Like, yes. I'm just going to spoil right here and now that I had to wait 15 months before I got a bed at residential hospital because I called them and begged for a bed. So that was ordinary waiting list was 15 months. I was also still very dissociated. I had a tad bit more contact whenever I met my friends. That genuinely helped but except for that I felt very floaty. I tried to spend a lot of time doing music so I tried to learn the violin and the guitar and I sang and I did a lot of that which I think is was a really good thing in that sense. Goodbye. I told my psychiatrist, like, if I hadn't got these appointments back in November, I would have crashed. And he was just like, no, I don't think so. Uh, I was so poorly. And just to tell him that, and he he's going like, no, that was hurtful. And I know he just did it maybe to like, because he believes in me more than I do. But honestly, when I tell him that, I mean that. And to have him tell me that's not true. And what do you know? It's been cancelled. <laughs> oh my god. I have gr my my next session is on the twenty seventh of November. <laughs> <laughs> so oh my god now I'm having a panic attack mm. yeah I think I'm going to yeah that's very long to do that okay yeah thank you how then <laughs> I'm 
vill bara ha så bra. Jag vill bara ha så bra. Jag vill bara ha så bra igen. Jag vill bara att ångest bara är hotet. My panic disorder has gotten so much worse and I am bothered by panic attacks almost on the daily, even having panic attacks many many times a day. Um, but I've still had, I think now I have sessions maybe every other week, so I had like a session and then 14 days and then a session and then 14 days-ish and then a session. But that still wasn't enough and <clears throat> I needed help with my anxiety and I wasn't getting any anxiety treatment so it was just stupid. And then the rest of the fall I tried going to the theatre because I started going to a theatre group and my friend would drag me down there and I would like cry and say like no no we're going back like I'm not going there I regret it so bad but then she would just take me there anyways and so we, we would kind of like take each other there so like I would tell her yes let's go let's go and then she would follow me there physically and then I would just be there for her during like rehearsals and at the first few rehearsals I just I remember sitting there thinking this is so pointless I don't get why anyone does anything I was so depressed I was just like almost like infected in this like existential OCD thinking what's the point like why is everyone doing this I don't get it and um, but I would continue to, to just go there because I was like we're just gonna push through like we're just gonna push through here. We literally got nothing to lose. Like, if we think everything is pointless, then at least we can just go here. And that was so important because that place became really, really present in my life moving forward. Waiting for someone to be sick enough is not a good idea. Where are we off to, Mom? Final competition of the short films, and your film has been nominated. They're actually gonna show my film. <laughs> there was this director, young director student, that asked me to come down and talk with her about a role she had foreseen me in. Sara, my friend, and her mother actually followed me down there because I cried so much and I was so nervous and so anxious and just... But she followed me down there, pretty sure I cried before I left them. And then I went in there and I had this conversation with the director, I didn't tell her anything. So I looked fine, probably. Before we left, I stopped and I said, you know, I really want to be in this movie. I love your script, but I am struggling so much with anxiety these days that I'm very scared to say yes and then not be able to show up. So I just need some time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cheers, okay. Jag har smakt ett gott i som är fungerat som en chili och smakt österkt. Har du smakt habanero? Och jag var inte tull här. Jag vet det, jag trodde du hade sett det. Det är så dark, men ja. Så, finished. Det är en rap. Vi finished my scenes that day and the next day I was gone. I was so sick. So August and September was really, really a breaking point and a point of no return. <laughs> I've been poorly in a general sense, so not functioning that well. And at this point I was just not functioning at all. My anxiety and panic attacks would be very frequent, very intense, very long lasting. And if I didn't have panic attacks, I would have so much anxiety that I wouldn't be able to sleep and eat, and meet friends, and keep appointments. I 
to that is that everything I don't manage to do are way more hurtful. I literally spent the whole night awake. I think I got to do something nice for myself, so I'm gonna watch Friends and drink some water, wash my face and braid my hair. It had already been bad that year, like I hadn't been able to show up to my my appointment and like I tried working some here and there and it was just horrible because my anxiety was killing me. But now it got even worse if that was like possible. <laughs> and I've started making these like fragments of January, fragments of February, like every month videos to try and like make sense of where my life was going and like what I was doing with my time and like not like time as in a whole but more like I didn't remember anything because I didn't have memory um, because I was so anxious. There, 2019. I'm saying this in September and I hope I have better words to give you in December. What a year. I think Money Python is right. If you're feeling in the dumps, don't be silly chumps. There's something you've forgotten and that's to dance and smile and laugh and sing. I believe that because the second I do that, life is not as bad. I, I think this is just something that's been building up for a long time and it just had to come out in one way or another so it came out into this year and last year. Just full force like I've never felt so helpless and hopeless and confused and everything has just been feeling so absurd. Life is quite absurd. That's the final word. I hope I can say this differently in December, but I realised I don't have the support system around me. So if I want to get better and if I want to feel stable, that's up to me. And I just have to go like lucky fishing on the internet and see if I can find things that can help. Because if not, I'm screwed. Because I don't get that help anywhere else. And my doctor said it too. She said, they sound like me because I didn't believe you were that ill either before now. Now I understand that you're really ill because they say I am such a up and going, you know, independent way put together person. That's actually what I'm reflecting outwards to. I, in my head, I'm reflecting someone who's just sitting like this and being like completely wrecked. But that's not what they see. They see someone who's in control partly, struggles with some things, but that manages everything if she just tries. And of course that's, I'm very blessed. That's like the word that goes around about me, but not when I need help. Then I don't want to look all put together and give up that. Why? Because then the help I'm gonna get back is the help to a person who is actually doing okay. And I've not been doing okay. I just need myself to take off my persona once in a while and show them what's really going on and I need them to see that. Because if I'm not showing it, I need them to trust my words. And that's what I've not been doing. Because, you know, they're like, oh, she's just like talking. It's so dramatic and everything is so hard, but geez, she seems like she's doing fine. My brain is literally just like, there's all the hundred reasons why I shouldn't go home. Let's go, let's go. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm very dizzy. I'm very shivery. I feel like acute tired like just like uh, exhausted like i can't keep my eyes up and i'm very nervous because i am um, i'm about to go on a three hour yoga session it's not three hours of dynamic yoga it's um it's like a course how to use yoga and mindfulness to help anxiety very relevant but um i'm nervous so nervous i want to cry uh, 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 uh. But you know what? We're gonna try. We're gonna try and that's how we do our best. We're gonna try. Okay, come on Mary, we can do this. I'm incredibly nauseous and dizzy and stressed out. And the only thing I am going to do is go into the theatre and see a musical with my friend. I've just already had like two beginning panic attacks today. Yeah, I want to throw up, I'm nervous. And also I kind of just want to 
to go to my psychologist and just tell him the weeks in between. The sessions are so many and they're so long and I'm seeing him, you know, hopefully uh, next Wednesday. And then it's been like, what, five, four weeks? Okay guys, she's there in 10 minutes. 10 minutes, we can do it. We can do it, we can, we can, we can. Come on, we're going to see a musical. I feel, I was gonna say mental, I do that too, but I feel bad. And I, I just don't wanna struggle anymore. Can I just like take a pill? No, no, I don't wanna take a pill. But I mean, can I just push a button? Today I went swimming and I was there for over an hour. I was there alone. I swam a uh, thousand meters, I crawled, and I jumped from the three meter. I just got this overwhelming feeling of nausea and I caught visual disturbances and like time kind of skips but I just gotta remind myself that days are different and today's not a good day. And it was clear that he was very glad in it. He and Sonja shared a strong kunst interest. And then I get so angry because I'm like, why? You had the whole life in front of you, he was only 46. <laughs> but who am I to say that? I can say, say that he's more than double my age. And I am imagining not having a future. It took us for Yeah, yeah, but we come to work for a few months. Good luck. I'm going on the couch, Mother. Good <laughs> Truly just the fall of 2018 and, and the whole of 2019 was what awful. Waiting for someone to be sick enough is not a good idea. The nurse at the emergency room was so confused as to why I was getting so poor treatment and she was just like, I don't understand, you're like a 19 year old girl who really wants to study and work and you need help and they're not giving it to you. 2020 made me stronger, 2019 and 2018 teared me up.